too loud in here all the time. And just not, you know, it's a, it's a very different crowd. The, the demographic's huge in here. Like, I got my girlfriend here right now, so I never was all the jokes about my girlfriend <laughs> masturbating. And I have my, my company friends here right now in the back. Right, so you can see them. So I can't tell any jokes about me masturbating. If you want to a lot of my jokes are about masturbating, so that kind of rules out a lot of my material. But I got some repeat offenders. These guys up front, you guys are always here. It's like an AA wow. meeting here. <laughs> on, a, on a regular night, I can't throw the mic without hitting somebody who's gotten a DUI before. Man. That's cool, so. But, um, no, it's, it's been a great holiday so far. Has everybody had a good Christmas? Good whatever the hell is. I got a lot of good presents this year, but I was opening them. I was like, oh, cool, new tools. This is the past. Oh, great, like Carhartt, new outdoor working stuff. This is awesome. Oh, a book on how to put an extension on my parents' house. What the fuck? Like, what the hell? Like, you guys backhandedly got me to build you half a house just now. But whatever. That's how parents are. They always get an educational gift or like something that benefits them in the long run. But, um, that's way better than the, the Essex Christmas package that you get at Walmart. Have you guys heard about this? It's like... Pasties, a strip pole, chewing tobacco, and pliers to pull those pesky teeth out. Like, who needs those teeth? Screw it, right? Stupid teeth. Who needs them? But, um, no, the best and the worst part of Christmas is definitely the food. It's like, it's so good, but I'm still bloated from that Christmas meal. I ate like, I gained like 10 pounds in weight strictly from cookies this year. And you're like, Matt, how do you know those 10 pounds came from cookies? Well, the brick of cookie dough that came out of my butt still in the wrapper. I rebaked them perfectly in the new chocolate chip cookies, so I know. There, there was nothing immaculate about that conception. I got straight raped by all my grandmothers, and they were packing chocolate chip cookie dough. That's kind of how that went down. Uh, I, I don't hate a lot about the season. I don't hate a lot about the Christmas, New Year's kind of thing. But the one thing I hate is the day after Christmas when I'm like fat, full of food. Is that one asshole who's running down like Route 1 or 24 in his brand new running shoes? I'm like, you dick. Like, are you serious? Like, I'm, I'm driving in my car, like, barely alive. Like, my stomach's hitting the steering wheel, and this one guy's like, hey, you got new shoes for Christmas? It's not like I get new weights for Christmas or something in the street, like, oh, it's a deep bird, you know? Like, hey, guys, look! It's a deep bird! It's great! My bicep's look awesome! Or it's not like I get like wraps and new boxing gloves and I'm like walking the dog and then I'm like, Duh! like <laughs> they work great. I just beat the shit out of my dog. And they call that dog fighting out on Route 40 because they don't know any better. And like <laughs> the last place you want to be on Route 40 is, or sorry, the last place you want to be during Christmas is Route 40. But unless you want to buy your grandmother a dildo, that's the perfect place to go. <laughs> and if you thought you were gonna go out tonight and not here, buy your grandmother a dildo, then you're welcome because I'm so <laughs> You're gonna go home tonight and you'd be like, I think I heard some music tonight, maybe some jokes, but for some reason I can only remember the phrase, buy your grandmother a dildo, and like, I can't get over it, it's making me sick, and I don't know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for contributing. Oh. The <laughs> um, oh, God. The, the, so the best part about this is though is I, I got to catch up on all my favorite TV shows while I've been off from work this week, and like I love the new Discovery and History channels. The worst one though, there's there's one called The Delivery Wars where like people are delivering things and complaining about how hard their job is. They're like, you gotta strap this down like really. Per like how many episodes can you make out of some guy strapping something to a truck and driving it somewhere, and then it gets there. Like, what the fuck? Like, what, what happens after that, you know? But, um, no, my favorite shows are, like, Sons of Guns is one of my favorite shows. Does anybody watch that? Yeah! yeah. Uh, they make guns. But what they really do, they don't make new guns. They kind of just, like, put older guns together, and they call it something new. Like, we're going to weld these two bazookas together. It's called the double bazooka. <laughs> They're like, they actually, I mean, uh, they did this on the show. <laughs> They, they, they put three shotguns together. They're like, we're going to put the shotguns into a machine gun format, and we're going to call it the machot gun. <laughs> and it's just three shotguns that rotate really fast and shoot in the same direction. And they actually did this, too. They put a taser gun onto a shotgun, and it's like, what sadistic asshole would, like, subdue someone to the ground with a taser gun, 
then while they're laying on the ground, miserable, being shocked, be like, uh, what? <laughs> Fuck you, dude! <laughs> Who the hell does that? But, um, you guys are gonna like this. I, I did, uh, I watched the documentary on beer, How It Saved the World. Does anybody see this? It's awesome, and it's like, accidentally how people save the world because they love beer so much. So, Louis Pasteur, the guy that invented pasteurization, he didn't do it for milk and cheese. His beer got flat, and he was like, he had the nerve after like thousands of years of people dying from disease and, and like no vaccination, he had the nerve to be like, my six pack went flat. I'm gonna find out what the fuck happened to this! <laughs> and he invented pasteurization to keep his beer from ever going flat again. And it just so happened that that like invented other things. And the other one that's funny is uh, in Germany they invented the lager beer, which I can't love anymore, and that's why I come here and I leave without remembering why. And um, it needs to be really cold in order to make lager beer. And so when they brought it over here, they would drive all the way up to Antarctica in a fucking ship, bring down blocks of ice to here in order to do it. And it's funny because like beer scientists, the only time they invented anything or did anything was when they were sober. So like one time they got really hung over one hot summer and they were like, oh, there's no more beer left. Fuck. Like, oh, we got to go get ice from Antarctica. I don't want to. And some guy in like a split second was like, my brain's working again. Here's how to invent the refrigerator. Here you go. Go make beer before I have to think ever again. Like, go, 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 go. And they invented the refrigerator for beer. And inadvertently, you can transport, like, human organs now across country. And that wasn't the thought initially. It was like, how do we make more beer faster and quicker? God, they just love getting drunk. But the other thing that I caught up on was, like, UFC and Ultimate Fighters. Anybody watch that stuff? Yep. Yeah, a little bit, something or another. Yeah. Anderson Silver is like hands down the best fighter in the world. And the president of the UFC, Dana White, gets pissed at him for not winning fast enough. He's like, how, do you, how, do you, how don't you go in there and just kick this guy's ass right away? He went in for four rounds and slapped this guy in the face and like kicked him around. And then in uh, round five, he has this special move that he calls kicking the guy's head off his shoulders. And he just came out and did that immediately and was like, hey, I won. But it's like, how many other occupations do you know where you can do that? It's not like you ever walk into your office and there's some guy typing with his feet and he's like, fuck you, dude, what's up? <laughs> or like, he's sitting naked on the copier and he's just like, all day, baby. All day, balls, all day, what? And then at the end of the day, he like hands in his assignment, hands in your portfolio, and hands in like three other people's assignment and just goes, <laughs> and like does everybody's work for him because he's the best guy there. Oh. That's easily my favorite show. There, there's another guy on there that I love, too. His name's Nate Diaz. He's, like, this total punk-ass dude. And I really don't like him. I don't like people like that who are just mean. But he comes out, and he's always like, Stop the motherfucker. Like, Stop the whoop. And he just holds his hands up like this. And then, like, punches people in the face and runs away like this. And if some guy ever came up to me and was like, Bella, bitch, what? I'd be like, oh, where are you from? Like, <laughs> what high school did you go to? And I went to your parents. Like, this is great. This is nice to meet you. <laughs> this is going good. I'm glad. Everybody's quiet. Were you guys, you guys, were you here? I told you I would do Dundalk jokes. Were you guys here for Dundalk rugby joke deal? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I knew you were. Anyway, well, I'll, I'll do it anyway. It's going really well. Um, has anybody... Been in a fight That's cool, man. Anybody? Wait for you to come back to the fight. Is it with your, your dad, your brother, a stranger? Who? All of the above? You're, you're my new favorite. You're my new favorite demographic in the bar. Let's go. The first fight I ever got in was with my boss at 2 in the afternoon at a strip club. But if you can tell me where that was, I'll buy you a beer. First person in the bar. Anybody? What? Go party. Nope. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, listening earlier. I pretty much gave you the answer earlier. She's yeah, a good yeah. person. I already got it. Oh. <laughs> Dundalk is just the worst place ever. It's like the Wild West of Maryland. The first time I ever drank in Dundalk, I went to a bar, and I sat down, and behind me I heard, oh, looks like we got a little fang boy here. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I just got here. This is my first beer I've ever had in this town. Like, what the fuck? And I turned around, and it was a 16-year-old in a bar. It was a 16-year-old pregnant girl smoking a cigarette in a bar. 
That is not fake. I did not make that up. Uh, apparently, she was flirting with me, is what one of her friends told me. And I was like, that's how you flirt with people around here? So once I figured that out, I kind of played into the whole, like, yeah, I'm gay thing. And I was like, I, I like, milked this bottle, basically, at myself. And she was, and with that looking, this other guy at the other end of the bar went, you better quit that fracture now, boy. <laughs> and I was like, you got to be kidding. Like, what, what gay spider senses does this guy have? And he knew that I was jerking a bottle off in front of myself across the room. But I walk, I'm sick of it. I'm being attacked from every angle. So I walk over to this guy, and the bartender grabs my arm before I get there. And she's like, you shouldn't do that. And I was like, why? She's like, that's Crazy Mike. And I said, why do they call him Crazy Mike? She said, because he gets in fights all the time. And I was like, yeah, you get in fights all the time when you're calling like guys you don't even know fag at the bar. Like, of course that's going to happen. And she's like, well, he gets in fights all the time. But then he bleeds all over people's mouths and gives them hepatitis C because he's got it. I was like, I that this guy's using hepatitis C like weaponized as a, as a defense mechanism against other people. And Dundalk is the craziest place I've been. The guys I worked with in Dundalk, they said the craziest things I've ever heard before. And they just have no grammatical anything. That, and... One time, they, they would always brag about safety. They would brag about the safety school that they went to. And I was like, I would brag about school too if I didn't pass the sixth grade and then just like left and then took school later. And they'd be like, man, you always got to keep three points on the ladder. You always got to keep three points on the ladder. It's either two hands and a foot or two feet and a hand. Uh, okay, guys, whatever you say. But then like 10 seconds later, they would like firemen slide down a 40 foot ladder into a pile of shit. And I'd be like, so, like, what part of the safety did you guys not understand? Because you're yelling at me for it. But this one guy, we were digging this hole, it's like 40 feet deep, we were digging with an excavator. And they're like, somebody's got to get down there. And they didn't feel like picking up a ladder. So they put this guy in the bucket, and they sent him down there. And I was like, dude, we're going to get in trouble. This guy doesn't have a hard hat on, doesn't have any safety equipment. Like, we're going to get in trouble. And this guy was like, I got this, dude. And he walks over and he goes, hey, Aaron, you feel safe down there? And he looks up and he goes, it always does, mostly the time. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Like that, how did that clear up any of the issues? But once we got to the bottom of that pit, um, we were supposed to be working on this pipe that was down there. And it turns out the entire hole that we dug for four weeks was two feet to the right of where we needed to be. So I crawled back up the ladder. And I asked this guy, I was like, what's your deal, man? Like, why why are we off course? You're the instructor here. You're supposed to be doing this right. He literally flips the drawing upside down and goes, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my. Fuck. My bad. And I was like, what, what other physician, like, could do that ever? It's like, you, if you go to the gynecologist and you're like, looking at the drawing. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Different hole, I'm sorry. I'm sorry guys. My bad. <sighs> but this guy that I worked with, he would say the dumbest shit all the time, but he wanted you to ask him what it was. He would never just say it out loud. So he would be like, ha ha! And just look at him and be like, I was gonna ask, and I would never want to ask him. And then he'd be like, ha ha! <laughs> and look at me and kind of like, what? What, Billy? And he'd be like, Pfft. skinny girls hate me, and fat girls are scared of me. And then they're why? And I was like, Billy, why Why are skinny girls, why do they hate you and why are fat girls afraid of you? And he goes, Pfft. skinny girls know I don't want nothing to do with them. <laughs> fat girls are afraid of me because they know what I'll do with them. <laughs> I really, really, really wanted to ask him what that was, but I just said, no, don't do it. He really wants to ask. He just do it. He's got something ready. Like, he's a, he's a work stand-up comic. Like, he knows what he wants to say right then and there. Those guys had plenty of lines prepared. We worked in a shit factory, so they kept calling themselves, like, turd herders and, like, everything you've ever heard of. Like, you think you're funny, maybe, and you could be like, huh, I'm a poop smith. Like, they're like, fuck you, dude. Like, we do this every day. 50% of our work ethic is into making fun of what we do for a living. <laughs> but, um, <sighs> it feels good. It feels good, guys. Yeah, Pat. <laughs> um, so, I don't consider myself very, what's that? Five? Okay. Um, okay, Jules. Anything for you, Jules. I love you, Jules. Um, 
Jules laughed at that. You guys didn't have to. It's okay. It was just for her. It's special. Um, so I wrestled in high school. And, <laughs> and everybody told me, like, at the time, like, I don't, I don't like when people use the word gay as just an adjective. But, like, the time I started to divide whether gay was, like, you know, men liking men or gay was, like, lame was about, like, 15 or 16. I wrestled in high school. And people were like, dude, this is gay. And I was like, no, it's not lame. It's a fun thing to do. Like, and then I would look down at the mat. And I'd be like, that guy's balls are just in that guy's mouth because it's part of the move that he's doing. Like, that's not lame. And I was like, oh, like, guy's balls are in a 